Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Block's Media Arts Tutorials. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to create low poly illustrations. So let's get into it. We will be working on an apple. Okay, I thought we would make a uh, low poly apple. And so I want to talk about the basics that you need to understand uh, when doing a low poly illustration. Okay, so we, we are going to be using the pen tool. Now you will be needing to create a stroke, but not a fill. So what I would do is click on the default fill and stroke to get yourself a black stroke and then click on the none button to turn off your fill. So that way you will only be drawing with a stroke. Aside from that, we will not be drawing with curves. Okay, this uh, for low poly to work, it has to be straight lines and solid corners. Now simply double click on the blank part of your layer and then hit template. And what that does is it locks it, but it also dims your main image. So next, what we need to do is we'll create one new layer above layer one, which is our apple. Next, we'll just go ahead and grab our path, our pen tool, excuse me, and you can press P on your keyboard to do that simply and easily. The very first thing we do is the silhouette of the object or whatever it is you're, you're working on. And then we'll go to the inside and create and fill in the inner details. And then after that, we'll go through and fill in the, or outline, I should say, the shades and values that are on the, um, the image. Okay, so let's start with the first one, which is outlining the silhouette. And the way that I like to do this is we'll simply create anchors, simple clicks that are so, you know, fairly far apart. Now, you don't have to go that far. Let's actually bring it back a little bit. I'm gonna go a little shorter, so just about like this is good if you make them too close there's a reason that you don't want to make your lines and your bring your anchors too close to each other because we are going to be let me disconnect here you're going to be finding the anchors and creating your polygons based on those anchors now if they're too close let's say we have anchors that are this close like this okay then you're going to start to you're going to have to create smaller polygons to connect those and you'll end up making essentially a high polygon image with really, really small polygons. That's not what we want. Okay, so let's start fresh here. So here we go. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't like here, I missed it. I missed over here. It doesn't really matter. The, the viewing audience will not see your original image so they're just going to see whatever it is that you produce all right and end it there so there's the the silhouette is done and you can see first of all you can see all of the anchors are showing that means that your path has is still selected right it's still selected so now if i went in to do the details which is the next step we want to finish the inside details with your path still selected, notice what happens to the anchor. Do you see the little minus that popped up under your uh, your cursor? Or my cursor, I should say. When If I were to click on that anchor, that would delete that anchor. That's not what we want. So there are two things that I want you to keep in mind about adding anchors. If you're adding it to an, uh, a line that's already been selected like this, you absolutely can put an anchor down. You press the Shift key and hold it come over on top of that anchor and click. Now I'm, I'm drawing the next one. So that'll work just fine. It'll put an anchor directly on top of another anchor if it's selected, but you have to hold the shift key. Otherwise it'll delete, okay? Another option would be, what I like to do is after I draw a path, press control or command, press that key and simply click off into the, the other areas, any, any area that's that doesn't have ink or a stroke okay that'll deselect it then you can go ahead and hover over the anchor and begin again okay so let's go through and finish up the details here now I missed that one so control Z will back you up undo now here's a situation where I've got a straight line 
actually no here's okay now I forgot that I added that anchor I'm gonna actually just push this up I don't want it to be on a straight line like this I'd like to just give it a little bend that way if I press control and then click to let go of that line I can start a fresh line here to follow this line right here so just go bing to there The very next step is to look for the values and the shades. So we've got some values and shading here. So we've got like uh, some shading down at the bottom and we've got some lighter values and darker values over here. So let's start with just simple clicks. We're going to surround this area. But there you go. So now we've segmented out the various color you know color areas and shades and values the next step is to put in the polygons okay you're going to be drawing anchors or creating anchors on top of anchors you will not be making anchors to solid lines or paths um, and also uh, every polygon in the very end we're going to be creating basically triangles all over the place so the polygons should be three sided so we have one here that's one two three four five six sides uh, right out here that's one two three four five six seven right and so these are going to have to be broken down into smaller areas and I can that's actually this is a great opportunity for me to show you how to do that so let's just put an anchor on top of an, of an anchor here and we'll basically just figure out where you want you can go to any of well, not these, but you can go to these. And I'm just going to break it here and then here. And I, you know, naturally could go here, but I'm actually going to click and choose to go here. So this is really important. What you should remember not to do is do not ever go across other paths. Don't let your path cross over other paths like this this is not what we're trying to accomplish here uh, what you want to have happen is uh, you go to this one and then you let go of it and then you can split it this way or go the other direction all right so now let's continue uh, you with your pinky at the control or command simply or one of your fingers <laughs> down there press the control and press Y this flips to your outlines but what you do see is whether or not your lines are connected and you can zoom right in you see I'm at 8500 percent there uh, and you can see whether or not you've got anchors going to anchors now if you had done it wrong you would see right away you might see like this where you have you know this is it's just slightly off or maybe you didn't connect it properly it's like like that uh, but you can't tell uh, when if you're looking at it from here it looks like you made it right control command Y brings you back to your outlines you need to zoom in and grab your white arrow grab this anchor and make sure that all anchors are connected or on top of or not necessarily connected to but are on top of other anchors that's highly important for this process to look correct Okay, I believe it's ready now to uh, to do color. What I what I like to do is uh, turn off the dim feature. Keep it locked and keep it as a template. Select all of your lines. So if your uh, your object layer, your image layer is locked, you should not have any problem with this. Just grabbing the lines alone. And what I'd like you to do is go to Object, Live Paint, Make. 
All right, you can tell you're in a live paint area because the, the corner nodes have gotten larger. These boxes are larger now. And if you press K on your keyboard, you can see that the areas are all highlighting, which is exactly what we need. So I'm going to zoom in, press the Alt key or Opt, and you'll get the eyedropper. Hold that in and then simply click with your mouse right in the very the very center of one of the polygons and then let go of the keyboard and click again you'll drop that color right in that area and that's the whole process this has got a, you know a bunch of different colors in there and i'm going to choose one of the darker colors because it's going into the shaded area here so press alt or opt click on the dark area and then let go of the keyboard and click Now, this is an opportunity to find out wh how we're doing. You can easily turn off the uh, image layer by clicking on the visibility and it turns it on and off and you can see how far you've come. All right, so let's just go through the whole thing, continue. Okay, there we go. Now, the very last step, if we let go of it, you deselect it, it's got all of the, the lines still, uh, all of your strokes. Select the whole thing again, go over and select the toggle, the, uh, the stroke selector over here, and click on the none button, and then deselect, and there you are. Okay, that's essentially all there is to it. That's your low poly illustration. All right, if you have trouble with this, please feel free to email me. I am happy to help in any way that I can. Hope you had fun with this. Take care. We'll see you in the next one.